Poem 1 of Oak and Ivy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew Kennedy. Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Ode to Ethiopia. O mother race, to thee I bring this pledge of faith unwavering this tribute to thy glory i know the pangs which thou didst feel when slavery crushed thee with its heel with thy dear blood all gory sad days were those ah sad indeed but through the land the fruitful seed of better times was growing the plant of freedom upward sprung and spread its leaves so fresh and young its blossoms now are blowing on every hand in this fair land proud ethiop's swarthy children stand beside their fairer neighbor the forests flee before their stroke their hammers ring their forges smoke they stir in honest labor they tread the fields where honor calls their voices sound through senate halls in majesty and power to right they cling, the hymns they sing, up to the skies in beauty ring, and bolder grow each hour. Be proud, my race, in mind and soul, thy name is writ on glory's scroll, in characters of fire. High mid the clouds of fame's bright sky, thy banner blazoned folds now fly, and truth shall lift them higher. Thou hast the right to noble pride, whose spotless robes were purified by blood's severe baptism. Upon thy brow the cross was laid, and labor's painful sweat beads made a consecrating chrism. No other race, or white or black, when bound as thou wert to the rack, so seldom stooped to grieving. No other race, when free again, forgot the past, and proved them man so noble in forgiven. Go on and up, our souls and eyes shall follow thy continuous rise, our ears shall list thy story. From bards which from thy root shall spring, and proudly tune their lyres to sing of Ethiopia's glory. End of Poem 1Poem 2 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar A Drowsy Day The air is dark, the sky is gray, the misty shadows come and go, and here within my dusky room each cheer looks ghostly in the gloom. Outside the rain falls cold and slow, half stinging drops, half blinding spray. Each slightest sound is magnified, for drowsy quiet holds her reign. The burnt stick on the fireplace breaks, the nodding cat with start awakes, and then to sleep drops off again, unheeding Towser at her side. I look far out across the lawn, where huddled stand the silly sheep. My work lies idle at my hands my thoughts fly out like scattered strands of thread and on the verge of sleep still half awake i dream and yawn what spirit rise before my eyes how various of kind and form sweet memories of days long past the dreams of youth that could not last each smiling calm each raging storm that swept across my early skies half seen the bare gaunt fingered boughs before my window sweep and sway and chafe in tortures of unrest my chin sinks down upon my breast i cannot work on such a day but only sit and dream and drowse End. 
of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 3 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Keep a pluggin' away I've a humble little motto That is homely, though it's true. Keep a pluggin' away. It's a thing when I've an object That I always try to do. Keep a pluggin' away. When you have rising storms to quell, When opposing waters swell, It will never fail to tell keep a pluggin away if the hills are high before and the paths are hard to climb keep a pluggin away and remember that success comes to him who bides his time keep a pluggin away from the greatest to the least none are from the rule released be thou toiler poet priest keep a pluggin away delve away beneath the surface, there is treasure farther down. Keep a pluggin' away. Let the rain come down in torrents, let the threatening heavens frown. Keep a pluggin' away. When the clouds have rolled away, there will come a brighter day. All your labor to repay. Keep a pluggin' away. There'll be lots of sneers to swallow. There'll be lots of pain to bear. Keep a pluggin' away. If you've got your eye on heaven, some bright day you'll wake up there. Keep a pluggin' away. Perseverance still is king. Time its sure reward will bring. Work and wait unwavering. Keep a plugging away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 4 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Sparrow A little bird with plumage brown Beside my window flutters down A moment chirps its little strain Then taps upon my window pane And chirps again and hops along To call my notice to its song But I work on, nor heed its lay Till, in neglect, it flies away. So birds of peace and hope and love Come fluttering earthward from above To settle on life's window sills And ease our load of earthly ills. But we, in traffic's rush and din, Too deep engaged to let them in, with deadened heart and sense plod on, nor know our loss till they are gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 5 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar An Easter Ode to the cold, dark grave they go, Silently and sad and slow, From the light of happy skies And the glance of mortal eyes. In their beds the violets spring, And the brook flows murmuring. But at eve the violets die, And the brook in the sand runs dry. In the rosy, blushing morn, See, the smiling babe is born. For a day it lives, and then breathes its short life out again. And anon gaunt visage death With his keen and icy breath Blow it out the vital fire In the hoary-headed sire. Heeding not the children's wail, Father's droop, and mothers fail, sinking sadly from each other, sister parts from loving brother. All the land is filled with wailing, sounds of mourning garments trailing, with their sad portent imbued, making melody subdued. 
But in all this depth of woe, this consoling truth we know, there will come a time of rain and the brook will flow again. Where the violet fell, twill grow when the sun has chased the snow. See in this the lesson plain, mortal man shall rise again. Well, the prophecy was kept. Christ, first fruit of them that slept, rose with victory circled brow. So, believing one, shalt thou. Ah, but there shall come a day when unhampered by this clay, souls shall rise to life newborn on that resurrection morn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 6 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar October October is the treasurer of the year, and all the months pay bounty to her store. The fields and orchards still their tribute bear, and fill her brimming coffers more and more. But she, with youthful lavishness, spends all her wealth in gaudy dress, and decks herself in garments bold of scarlet, purple, red, and gold. She heedeth not how swift the hours fly, but smiles and sings her happy life along. She only sees above a shining sky. She only hears the breeze's voice in song. Her garments trail the woodlands through and gather pearls of early dew that sparkle till the roguish sun creeps up and steals them every one but what cares she that jewels should be lost when all of nature's bounteous wealth is hers though princely fortunes may have been their cost not one regret her calm demeanor stirs whole-hearted happy careless free she lives her life out joyously, nor care when frost stalks o'er her way and turns her auburn locks to gray. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 7 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Merry Autumn it's all a farce, these tales they tell, about the breezes sighing, and moans astir o'er field and dell, because the year is dying. Such principles are most absurd, I care not who first taught em. There's nothing known to beast or bird to make a solemn autumn. In solemn times, when grief holds sway, with continents distressing, you note the more of black and gray will then be used in dressing. Now purple tints are all around, the sky is blue and mellow, and e'en the grasses turn the ground from modest green to yellow. The seeds burrs all with laughter crack on featherweed and jimson and leaves that should be dressed in black are all decked out in crimson. A butterfly goes winging by, a singing bird comes after, and nature all from earth to sky is bubbling o'er with laughter. The ripples wimple on the rills like sparkling little lasses. The sunlight runs along the hills, and laughs among the grasses. The earth is just so full of fun, it really can't contain it, and streams of mirth so freely run, the heavens seem to rain it. Don't talk to me of solemn days, 
in autumn's time of splendor because the sun shows fewer rays and these grow slant and slender why it's the climax of the year the highest time of living till naturally its bursting cheer just melts into thanksgiving end of poem this recording is in the public domain read for LibriVox.org by andrew kennedy poem eight of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar to dr james newton matthews mason illinois all round about the clouds encompassed me on every side i looked my weary sight was met by terrors of plutonian night and chilling surges of a cruel sea that beat against my stronghold ceaselessly roared rude derision at my hapless plight and hope which i had thought to hold so tight slipped from my weakening grasp and floated free but when i thought to flee the unequal strife as wearied out i could not bear it more fate gave the choicest gem of all her store and noble matthews came into my life he warmed my being like a virile flame and with his coming light and courage came end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem nine of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar a summer pastoral it's hot today the bees is buzzin kinda don't care like around and fur off the warm ear dances o'er the parchin roofs in town in the brook the cows is standin children hidin in the hay can't keep none of em workin cause it's hot today it's hot today the sun is blazing like a great big ball of fire seems as if instead of settin it keeps mountain higher and higher i'm as triflin as the children though i blame them lots and scold i keep slippin to the spring house where the milk is rich and cold the very air within its shadow smells o cool and restful things and a roguish little robin sits above the place and sings i don't mean to be a shirkin but i linger by the way longer maybe than is needful cause it's hot today it's hot today the horses stumble half asleep across the fields and a host of teasing fancies or my burning senses steals dreams of cool rooms curtained lowered and a softy's tempting look patter of composing raindrops or the ripple of a brook i strike a stump that wakes me sudden dreams all vanish into air lordy how i chew me whiskers twouldn't do for me to swear but i have to be so careful about my thoughts and what i say something might slip out unheeded cause it's hot today get up there suki you sal get over sakes alive how i do sweat every stitch that i've got on me better scent is ringing wet if this keep up i'll lose my temper gee there sal you lazy brute wonder who on earth this weather could have been got up to suit you sam go bring a tin of water dash it all don't be so slow pears as if you took an hour tween each step to stop and blow think i want to stand a melting out here in this billing sun 
while you stop to think about it? Lift them feet or you're on run. It ain't no use, I'm plumb fatagled. Come and put this team away. I won't plow another furrer. It's too mortal hot today. I ain't weak, nor I ain't lazy, but I'll stand this half day's loss, for I let the devil make me lose my patience and get cross. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 10 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Songs A bee that was searching for sweets one day Through the gate of a rose garden happened to stray. In the heart of a rose he hid away And forgot in his bliss the light of day. As sipping his honey he buzzed in song, Though day was waning he lingered long. For the rose was sweet, so sweet. A robin sits pluming his ruddy breast, And a madrigal sings to his love in her nest. Oh, the skies, they are blue, the fields are green, And the birds in your nest will soon be seen. She hangs on his words with a thrill of love, And chirps to him, as he sits above, for the song is sweet, so sweet. A maiden was out on a summer's day, with the winds and the waves and the flowers at play, and she met with a youth of gentle ear, with the light of the sunshine on his hair. Together they wandered the flowers among, they loved and loving they lingered long, for to love is sweet, so sweet. Bird of my lady's bower, sing her a song, tell her that every hour, all the day long, thoughts of her come to me, filling my brain with the warm ecstasy of love's refrain. Little bird, happy bird, being so near, when in her slightest word thou mayest hear, seen her glancing eyes, sheen of her hair, thou art in paradise, would I were there. I am so far away, thou art so near, plead with her, birdling gay, plead with my dear. Rich be thy recompense, fine be thy fee, if through thine eloquence she hearken me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 11 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Sunset the river sleeps beneath the sky and clasps the shadows to its breast. The crescent moon shines dim on high, and in the lately radiant west the gold is fading into gray. Now stills the lark his festive lay and mourns with me the dying day, while in the south the first faint star lifts to the night its silver face and twinkles to the moon afar across the heavens graying space low murmurs reach me from the town as day puts on her sombre crown and shakes her mantle darkly down end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem 12 of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar in summertime when summertime has come and all the world is in the magic thrall of perfumed ears that lull each sense to fits of drowsy indolence 
when skies are deeper blue above and flowers a flush then most i love to start while early dews are damp and wend my way in woodland tramp where forests rustle tree on tree and sing their silent songs to me where pathways meet and pathways part to walk with nature heart by heart till wearied out at last i lie where some sweet stream steals singing by a mossy bank where violets vie in color with the summer sky or take my rod and line and hook and wander to some darkling brook where all day long the willows dream and idly droop to kiss the stream and there to loll from morn till night unheeding nibble run or bite just for the joy of being there and drinking in the summer air the summer sounds and summer sights that set a restless mind to rights when grief and pain and raging doubt of men and creeds have worn it out the bird's song and the water's drone the humming bees low monotone the murmur of the passing breeze and all the sounds akin to these that make a man in summer time feel only fit for rest and rhyme joy springs all radiant in my breast though pauper poor than king more blest the tide beats in my soul so strong that happiness breaks forth in song and rings aloud the welkin blue with all the songs i ever knew o oh, time of rapture time of song how swiftly glide the days along adown the current of the years above the rocks of grief and tears tis wealth enough of joy for me in summer time to simply be end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem 13 of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar him when storm arise and darkening skies about me threatening lower to thee o lord i lift mine eyes to thee my tortured spirit flies for solace in that hour thy mighty arm will let no harm come near me nor befall me thy voice shall quiet my alarm when life's great battle waxeth warm no foeman shall appall me upon thy breast secure i rest from sorrow and vexation no more by sinful cares oppressed but in thy presence ever blessed o god of my salvation end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 14 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar A Banjo Song Oh, there's lots of care and trouble In this world to swallow down And old sorrow's purty lively In her way of getting round Yet there times when I forget em Aches and pains and troubles all And it's when I take at even my old banjo from the wall about the time that night is falling and my daily work is done and above the shady hilltops i can see the setting sun when the quiet restful shadows is beginning just to fall then i take the little banjo from its place upon the wall then my family gathers round me in the fading of the light as i strike the strings to try em if they all is tuned aright and it seems we're so nigh heaven we can hear the angels sing 
when the music or that banjo sets my cabin all a ring. And my wife and all the chillin', male and female, small and big, even up to gray-haired granny, seem just bound to do a jig. Till I change the style of music, change the movement and the time, and the ringin' little banjo plays an old heart feeling I'm. And somehow my throat gets choky, and a lump keeps trying to rise, like it wanted to catch the water that was flowing to my eyes. And I feel that I could sorter knock the socks clean off of sin, and I hear my poor old granny with her trembling voice jine in. Then we all throw in our voices for to help the tune out too, like a big camp meeting quarry, trying to sing a mountain through, and our throats let out the music, sweet and solemn, loud and free, till the rafters on my cabin echo with the melody. Oh, the music, oh, the banjo, quick and devilish, solemn slow, is the greatest joy and solace that a weary slave can know. So just let me hear it ringing, though the tune be poem rough. It's a pleasure and the pleasures of this life is few enough. Now the blessed little angels up in heaven we are told don't do nothing all their lifetime except in play on hops of gold. Now I think Heaven be more homelike if we'd hear some music fall from our real old fashioned banjo, like that one upon the wall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 15 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. The old tunes. You can talk about your anthems and your arias and such, and your modern choir singing that you think so awful rich. But you oughta heard us youngsters in the times now far away, a singing o' the old tunes in the old fashioned way. There was some o' us sung treble and a few of us growled bass, and the tide of song flowed smoothly with its compliment of grace. There was spirit in that music, and a kind of solemn sway, a singing of the old tunes in the old-fashioned way. I remember after standing in my homespun pantaloons, on my face the bronze and freckles, of the sons or youthful Junes, thinking that no mortal minstrel ever chanted such a lay as the old tunes we were singing in the old-fashioned way. The boys would always lead us, and the girls would all chime in, till the sweetness of the singing robbed the listening soul of sin. And I us to tell the parson, twas as good to sing as pray, when the people sung the old tunes in the old-fashioned way. How I long again to hear it, pouring forth from soul to soul, with the treble high and meller, and the basses mighty roll. But the times is very different. And the music heard today ain't the singing of the old tunes in the old-fashioned way. Little screeching by a woman, little squawking by a man. Then the organs twiddle twaddle, just the empty space to span. And if you should even think it, tisn't proper for to say, that you want to hear the old tunes in the old-fashioned way. But I think that some bright morning, 
when the toils of life is o'er and the sun of heavens arising glads with light the happy shore i shall hear the angels chorus in the realms of endless day a singing of the old tunes in the old-fashioned way end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 16 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Lullaby Sing me sweet a soothing psalm, Holy, tender, low, and calm, Full of drowsy words and dreamy, Sleep half seen where the sides are seamy, Lay my head upon your breast, Sing me to rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 17 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Christmas Carol Ring out, ye bells, all nature swells with gladness at the wondrous story. The world was lorn, but Christ is born to change our sadness into glory sing earthlings sing to-night a king hath come from heaven's high throne to bless us the outstretched hand o'er all the land is raised in pity to caress us come at his call be joyful all away with mourning and with sadness the heavenly choir with holy fire their voices raise in songs of gladness the darkness breaks and dawn awakes her cheeks suffused with youthful blushes the rocks and stones in holy tones are singing sweeter than the thrushes then why should we in silence be when nature lends her voice to praises when heaven and earth proclaim the truth of him for whom that lone star blazes no be not still but with a will strike all your harps and set them ringing on hill and heath let every breath throw all its power into singing end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 18 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Welcome Address To the Western Association of Writers Westward the course of empire takes its way, So Berkeley said, and so today, The men who know the world still say, The glowing West with bounteous hand Bestows her gifts throughout the land and smiles to see at her command art science and the industries new fruits of new hesperides so proud are you who claim the west as homeland doubly are you blessed to live where liberty and health go hand in hand with brains and wealth so here's a welcome to you all whate'er the work your hands let fall to you who trace on history's page the footprints off each passing age to you who tune the laurelled lyre to songs of love or deeds of fire to you before whose well-wrought tale the cheek doth flush or brow grow pale to you who bow the ready knee and worship cold philosophy a welcome warm as western wine and free as western hearts be thine do what the greatest joy ensures the city has no will but yours june twenty seventh eighteen ninety two end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Poem 19 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Old Apple Tree There's a memory keeps a-running Through my weary head tonight, And I see a picture dancing In the fire flame's ruddy light. Tis the picture of an orchard Wrapped in autumn's purple haze With the tender light about it That I loved in other days. And a standin' in a corner, once again I seem to see the verdant leaves and branches of an old apple tree. You perhaps would call it ugly, and I don't know but it's so when you look the tree all over, unadorned by memory's glow, for its boughs are gnarled and crooked, and its leaves are gettin' thin. And the apples of its bearing wouldn't fill so large a bin as they used to. But I tell you, when it comes to pleasing me, it's the dearest in the orchard is that old apple tree. I would hide within its shelter, settling in some cozy nook where no calls nor threats could stir me from the pages of my book. Oh, that quiet, sweet seclusion, in its fullness passeth words. It was deeper than the deepest that my sanctum now affords. Why, the jaybirds and the robins, they was hand in glove with me, as they winked at me and warbled in that old apple tree. It was on its sturdy branches that in summer long ago I would tie my swing and dangle in contentment to and fro, idly dreaming childish fancies, building castles in the air, making o oh, myself a hero of romances rich and rare. I can shut my eyes and see it, just as plain as plain can be, that same old swing a dangling to the old apple tree. There's a rustic seat beneath it that I never can forget. It's the place where me and Hallie, little sweetheart, used to set when we'd wander to the orchard so's no listening ones could hear as I whispered sugared nonsense into her little willing ear. Now my gray old wife is Hallie, and I'm grayer still than she, but I'll not forget our courting neat the old apple tree. Life for us ain't all been summer, but I guess we've had our share of its fitting joys and pleasures, and a sprinkling of its care. Oft the skies have smiled upon us, then again we've seen em frown, though our load was ne'er so heavy that we longed to lay it down. But when death does come a-callin', this my last request shall be, that they'll bury me and Hallie neath the old apple tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 20 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar James Withcombe Raleigh From a Westerner's Point of View No matter what you call it, whether genius, gift, or art, he sings the simple songs that come the closest to your heart. For trim and skillful phrases, I do not care a jot. Taint the words alone but feelings that tetch the tender spot. And that's just why I love him, why he's got such human feeling. And in every song he gives us, you can see it creeping, stealing. Through the core the tears go trickling, but the edge is bright and smiley. I never saw a poet like that poet Whitcomb Riley. His heart keeps beating time with iron in measures fast or slow, 
it tells us just the same old things our souls have learned to know. It paints our joys and sorrows in a way so strictly true that our body can't help knowing that he has felt them too. If there's a lesson to be taught, he never fears to teach it. And he puts the food so good and low that the humblest one can reach it. Now in our time when poets rhyme for money, fun, or fashion, tis good to hear one voice so clear that thrills with honest passion. So let the others build their songs and strive to polish highly. There's none of them can touch the heart like our own Withcomb Riley. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 21 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar A Thanksgiving Poem The sun hath shed its kindly light, Our harvesting is gladly o'er, Our fields have felt no killing blight, Our bins are filled with goodly store. From pestilence, fire, flood, and sword, we have been spared by thy decree, and now with humble hearts, O Lord, we come to pay our thanks to thee. We feel that had our merits been the measure of thy gifts to us, we errant children born of sin might not now be rejoicing thus. No deed of ours hath brought us grace, when thou wert nigh, our sight was dull, we hid in trembling from thy face. But though, O God, wert merciful, thy mighty hand o'er all the land had still been open to bestow those blessings which our wants demand from heaven whence all blessings flow. Thou hast with ever watchful eye looked down on us with holy care and from thy storehouse in the sky hast scattered plenty everywhere. Then lift we up our songs of praise to thee, O Father, good and kind. To thee we consecrate our days. Be thine the temple of each mind. With incense sweet our thanks ascend before thy works our powers pall. Though we should strive years without end, we could not thank thee for them all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 22 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar To Miss Mary Britton when the legislature of Kentucky was discussing the passage of a separate coach bill, Miss Mary Britton, a teacher in the school of Lexington, Kentucky, went before them and in a ringing speech protested against the passage of the bill. Her action was heroic, though it proved to be without avail. God of the right, arise and let thy power prevail. Too long thy children mourn in labor and travail. O oh, speed the happy day when waiting ones may see the glory bringing birth of our real liberty. Grant thou, O oh, gracious God, that not in word alone shall freedom's boon be ours while bondage galled we moan. But condescend to us in our overwhelming need, break down the hindering bars and make us free indeed. Give us to lead our cause, more noble souls like hers, the memory of whose deed each feeling bosom stirs, whose fearless voice and strong rose to defend her race, roused justice from her sleep drove prejudice from place. Let not the mellow light of learning's brilliant ray 
be quenched to turn to night our newly dawning day to that bright shining star which thou didst set in place with universal voice thus speaks our grateful race not empty words shall be our offering to your fame the race you strove to serve shall consecrate your name speak on as fearless still work on as tireless ever and your reward shall be due meed for your endeavor end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 23 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Whittier Not o'er thy dust let there be spent The gush of maudlin sentiment, Such drift as that is not for thee, Whose life and deeds and songs agree, Sublime in their simplicity. Nor shall the sorrowing tear be shed, O singer sweet, thou art not dead in spite of time's malignant chill with living fire thy songs shall thrill and men shall say he liveth still great poets never die for earth doth count their lives of too great worth to lose them from her treasured store so shalt thou live for evermore though far thy form from mortal ken deep in the hearts and minds of men end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem 24 of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar nutting song the november sun invites me and although the chill wind smites me I will wander to the woodland where the laden trees await, and with loud and joyful singing, I will set the forest ringing as if I were king of autumn and Dame Nature were my mate. While the squirrels in his gambols, fearless round about me ambles, as if he were bent on showing in my kingdom he'd a share, while my warm blood leaps and dashes and my eyes with freedom flashes as my soul drinks deep and deeper of the magic in the air there's a pleasure found in nutting all life's cares and griefs outshutting that is fuller far and better than what prouder sports impart who could help a carol thrilling as he sees the baskets filling why the flow of song keeps running o'er the high walls of the heart so when i am home returning when the sun is lowly burning i will once more wake the echoes with a happy song of praise for the golden sunlight blessing and the breezes soft caressing and the precious boon of living in the sweet november days end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Poem 25 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar After While A Poem of Faith I think that thou the clouds be dark, That though the waves dash o'er the bark, Yet after while the light will come, and in calm waters safe at home, the bark will anchor. Weep not, my sad-eyed grey-robed maid, because your fairest blossoms fade, that sorrow stills or runs your cup, and even though you root them up, the weeds grow ranker. For after while your tears shall cease, and sorrow shall give way to peace. The flowers shall bloom, the weeds shall die, and in that faith seen by and by, thy woes shall perish. 
Smile at old fortune's adverse tide. Smile when the scoffers sneer and chide. Oh, not for you the gems that pale, and not for you the flowers that fail. Let this thought cherish, that after while the clouds will part, and then with joy the waiting heart shall feel the light come stealing in that drives away the cloud of sin and breaks its power. And you shall burst your chrysalis and wing away to realms of bliss, untrammeled, pure, divinely free, above all earth's anxiety from that same hour. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 26 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar To the Miami Kiss me, Miami, thou most constant one. I love thee more for that thou changest not. When winter comes with frigid blast, or when the blithesome spring is past, and summer's here with sunshine hot, or in sere autumn thou hast still the power to charm alike whate'er the hour. Kiss me, Miami, with thy dewy lips. Throbs fast my heart in as thine own breast beats. My soul doth rise as rise thy waves, as each on each the dark shore laves, and breaks in ripples and retreats. There is a poem in thine every phase, thou still hast sung through all thy days. Tell me, Miami, how it was with thee, when years ago Tecumseh in his prime, his birch boat o'er thy waters sent, and pitched upon thy banks his tent, in that long gone poetic time. Did some bronze bard thy flowing stream sit by, and sing thy praises, e'en as I? Did some bronze lover neath this dark old tree? whisper of love unto his indian maid and didst thou list his murmurs deep and in thy bosom safely keep the many raging vows they said or didst thou tell to fish and frog and bird the raptured scenes that there occurred but o oh, dear stream what volumes thou couldst tell to all who know thy language as i do of life and love and jealous hate. But now to tattle were too late, thou who hast ever been so true. Tell not to every passing idler here all those sweet tales that reach thine ear. But, silent stream, speak out and tell me this. I say that men and things are still the same. Were men as bold to do and dare? Were women then as true and fair? Did poets seek celestial flame? The hero died to gain a laurel brow? And women suffer then as now? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 27 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Love's Pictures Like the blush upon the rose When the wooing south wind speaks Kissing soft its petals Are thy cheeks Tender, soft, beseeching, true Like the stars that deck the skies Through the ether sparkling are thine eyes like the song of happy birds when the woods with spring rejoice in their blithe awakening is thy voice like soft threads of clustered silk o'er thy face so pure and fair sweet in its profusion is thy hair like a fear but fragile vase triumph of the carver's art 
graceful formed and slender, thus thou art. Ah, thy cheek, thine eyes, thy voice, and thy hair's delightful wave, make me, I'll confess it, thy poor slave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 28 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Chronic Kicker It was at the town convention for to nominate a mayor, and things had been progressing in a way both cool and fair, and we thought that we had finished in a manner mighty slick, when up rose the chronic kicker for to kick, kick, kick. Then we felt our feathers falling. No, we didn't laugh no more, while some quite impatient fellas made a bee-line for the door. And we listened and we listened, while the clock the hours ticked, to that derned old chronic kicker as he kicked, kicked, kicked. Next we held a conference meeting in our little mission church for a cheap, unworthy pastor. We were in an earnest search. We had just made our agreement, and twas come to very quick, when up rose the chronic kicker, for the kick, kick, kick. And we heard the birds a-whistling, in the ear so sweet and cool, while we all sat there a-listening to that flambergasted fool. But I'm sure the Lord was mindful for no thorn our conscience pricked, when we nodded while that kicker stood on kicked, kicked, kicked. Next was in a baseball battle, overlooked by boys in trees, where no act of bat or baseman could this chronic kicker please, until weary with his yelling, someone hit him with a brick. And he lay down in the diamond for the kick, kick, kick. But death, that great policeman, by no frowns or kicks defied, at last came up and seized them, and so with a kick he died. But he just before the funeral made the undertaker sick, as the coffin couldn't hold him for that everlasting kick end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem 29 of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar songs i love the dear old ballads best that tell of love and death whose every line sings love's unrest or mourns the parting breath. I love those songs the heart can feel that make our pulses throb when lovers plead or contrites kneel with choking sigh and sob. God sings through songs that touch the heart, and none are prized save these, though men may ply their gilded art for fortune's fame or fees. The muse that sets the songster's soul ablaze with lyric fire holds nature up an open scroll and builds art's funeral pyre. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 30 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar my sort of man. I don't believe in aristocrats. I never did, you see. The plain old home-like sort of folks is good enough for me. Of course I don't desire a man to be too tarnal rough, but then I think all folks should know when they're nice enough. Now there is folks in this here world, from peasant up to king, who want to be so awful nice they overdo the thing. That's just the thing that makes me sick, and quicker than a wink, I set it down that them same folks 
ain't half so good as you think. I like to see a man dress nice, in clothes becoming to. I like to see a woman fix, as women oughta do. And boys and gals, I like to see look fresh and young and spry. We all must have our vanity and pride before we die. But I judge no man by his clothes, nor gentleman, nor tramp. The man that wears the finest suit may be the biggest scamp. And he whose limbs are clad in rags that makes a mournful sight in life's great battle may have proved a hero in the fight. I don't believe in aristocrats. I like the honest tan that lies upon the healthful cheek and speaks the honest man. I like to grasp the brawny hand that labor's lips have kissed. For he who has not labored here, life's greatest pride has missed. The pride to feel that your own strength has cleaved for you the way to heights to which you were not born, but struggled day by day. What though the thousands sneer and scoff and scorn your humble birth? Kings are but subjects, you are king by right or royal worth. The man who simply sits and waits for good to come along ain't worth the breath that one would take to tell him he is wrong. For good ain't flowing round this world for every fool to sup. You've got to put your seers on and go and hunt it up. Good goes with honesty, I say, to honor and to bless. To rich and poor alike it brings our wealth of happiness. The aristocrats ain't got it all, for much to their surprise. That's one of Earth's most blessed things. They can't monopolize. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 31 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Old Homestead Tis an old deserted homestead on the outskirts of the town, where the roof is all moss-covered, and the walls are tumbling down. But around that little cottage do my brightest memories cling, for twas there I spent the moments of my youth, life's happy spring. I remember how I used to swing upon the old front gate, while the robin in the treetops sung a night song to his mate. And how later in the evening, as the beaux were wont to do, Mr. Perkins in the parlor sat and sparked my sister Sue. There my mother, heaven bless her, kissed or spank as was our need, and by smile or stroke implanted in our hearts fear virtue's seed, while my father, man of wisdom, lawyer keen and farmer stout, argued long with neighbor Dobbins how the corn crops would turn out. Then the quiltings and the dances, how my feet were wont to fly, while the moon peeped through the barn chinks from her stately place on high. Oh, those days so sweet, so happy, ever backward o'er me roll. Still the music of that farm life rings an echo in my soul. Now the old place is deserted, and the walls are falling down. All who made the home life cheerful now have died or moved to town. But about the dear old cottage shall my memories ever cling, for twas there I spent the moments of my youth, life's happy spring. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 32 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar On the Death of W.C. Thou arrant robber death, Couldst thou not find some lesser one than he To rob of breath, some poorer mind thy prey to be? His mind was like the sky, as pure and free, 
His heart was broad and open as the sea. His soul shone purely through his face, and love made him her dwelling place. Not less the scholar than the friend, not less a friend than man, the manly life did shorter end, because so broad it ran. Weep not for him, unhappy muse, his merits found a grander use, some other where God wisely sees the place that needs his qualities. Weep not for him, for when death lowers o'er youth's ambrosia scented bowers, he only plucks the choicest flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 33 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar An Old Memory How sweet the music sounded that summer long ago, when you were by my side, love, to list its gentle flow. I saw your eyes a-shining, I felt your rippling hair, I kissed your pearly cheek, love, and had no thought of care and gay or sad the music with subtle charm replete i found in after years love twas you that made it sweet for standing where we heard it i hear again the strain it wakes my heart but thrills it with sad mysterious pain it pulses not so joyous as when you stood with me and hand in hand we listened to that low melody. Oh, could the years turn back, love, Oh, could events be changed To what they were that time, love, Before we were estranged. Wert thou once more a maiden, Whose smile was gold to me, Were I once more the lover, Whose words was life to thee? Oh, God, could all be altered, The pain, the grief, the strife, and wert thou as thou shouldst be, my true and loyal wife. But all my tears are idle, and all my wishes vain. What once you were to me, love, you may not be again. For I, alas, like others, have missed my dearest aim. I asked for love, O oh, mockery, fate comes to me with fame. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 34 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Memorial Day Why deck with flowers these humble mounds? Why gather round this fast decaying mold? Why doth remembrance keep her solemn rounds And wrap thee sleepers in her loving fold? Why kneel, ye silent mourners, here To drop the reverential tear? Flesh is but dust when parted from the breath. Flesh is but dust, but worth of soul is gold. Tis not the dust we honor, but the brave and noble spirits that it once did hold. So kneel we weeping at the grave, as at the door through which have passed to enter into mansions vast, the heroes who have gone to meet a dearer destiny than dirgeful death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 35 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Melancholy Silently, without my window, Tapping gently at the pane, Falls the rain, Through the trees sighs the breeze, Like a soul in pain. Here alone I sit and weep, Thought hath banished sleep. Wearily I sit and listen, to the water's ceaseless drip, to my lip, fate turns up the bitter cup, forcing me to sip. 
tis a bitter, bitter drink. Thus I sit and think, thinking things unknown and awful, thoughts on wild, uncanny themes, waking dreams, specters dark, corpses stark, show the gaping seams whence the cold and cruel knife stole away their life bloodshot eyes all strained and staring gazing ghastly into mine blood like wine on the brow clotted now shows death's dreadful sign lonely vigil still i keep would that i might sleep still oh still my brain is whirling still runs on my stream of thought i am caught in the net fate hath set mind and soul are brought to destruction's very brink yet i can but think eyes that look into the future peeping forth from out my mind they will find some new weight soon or late on my soul to bind crushing all its courage out heavier than doubt dawn the eastern monarch's daughter rising from her dewy bed lays her head gainst the clouds sombre shrouds now half fringed with red o'er the land she gins to peep come o oh gentle sleep hark the morning cock is crowing dreams like ghosts must hie away tis the day rosy morn now is born dark thoughts may not stay day my brain from foes will keep now my soul i sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem thirty six of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar life a crust of bread and a corner to sleep in a minute to smile and an hour to weep in a pint of joy to a peck of trouble and never a laugh but the moans come double and that is life a crust and a corner that love makes precious with the smile to warm and the tears to refresh us and joy seems sweeter when cares come after and a moan is the finest of foils for laughter and that is life end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Poem 37 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar A Question I wist not that I had the power to sing, but here of late they say my songs are sweet. Is it because my timid numbers ring with love's warm music that doth ever beat? its melody within my throbbing heart if so what else can roguish cupid do i know him master of the archer's art is he a trained musician too end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem 38 of oak and ivy by paul lawrence dunbar worn out you bid me hold my peace and dry my fruitless tears forgetting that i bear a pain beyond my years you say that i should smile and drive the gloom away i would but sun and smiles have left my life's dark day all time seems cold and void and naught but tears remain life's music beats for me a melancholy strain i used at first to hope but hope is past and gone and now without a ray 
my cheerless life drags on. Like to an ash-stained hearth, when all its fires are spent, like to an autumn wood, by storm winds rudely shent. So sadly goes my heart, unclothed of hope and peace. It asks not joy again, but only seeks release. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 39 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar A Career Break me my bonds and let me fly To region vast, a boundless sky, Nor I, like Pythias Daphne, be Root-bound, ah no, I would be free, As yon same bird that in its flight Outstrips the range of mortal sight, Free as the mountain streams that gush from bubbling springs and downward rush, Across the serrate mountain's side, The rocks o'erwhelmed their banks defied, And like the passions in the soul, Swell into torrents as they roll. O oh, circumscribe me not by rules That serve to lead the minds of fools, But give me power to work my will and at my deeds the world shall thrill. My words shall rouse the slumbering zest that hardly stirs in manhood's breast. And as the sun feeds lesser lights, as planets have their satellites, so round about me will I bind the men who prize our master's mind. He lived a silent life alone and laid him down when it was done and at his head was placed a stone on which was carved a name unknown. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 40 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar On the River The sun is low, the waters flow, my boat is dancing to and fro. The eve is still, yet from the hill. The killdeer echoes loud and shrill. The paddles plash, the wavelets dash. We see the summer lightning flash. While now and then, in marsh and fen, Too muddy for the feet of men. Where neither bird nor beast has stirred, The spotted bullfrog's croak is heard. The wind is high, the grasses sigh, The sluggish stream goes sobbing by. And far away, the dying day, As cast its last effulgent ray, While on the land the shadows stand, Proclaiming that the eve's at hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 41 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Light Once when my soul was newly shriven, When perfect peace to me was given, Pervading all in all with currents bright, I saw shine forth a mighty light. And myriad lesser lights to this were joined, Each light with every other light entwined. And as they shone, a sound assailed my ears, Unlike the mighty music of the spheres. The greater light was love and peace and law, And it had power toward it, the rest to draw. It was the soul of souls, the greatest one, The life of lives, of sons, the sun and floating through it all my soul could see, the Christ light shining for humanity. And silently I heard soft murmurs fall, look up, earth child, the light is all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Poem 42 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar John Boyle O'Reilly Of noble minds and noble hearts, Old Ireland has goodly store, But thou wert still the noblest son That e'er the Isle of Erin bore, A generous race, and strong to dare, With hearts as true as purest gold, With hands to soothe as well as strike, as generous as they are bold this is the race thou lovest so and knowing them i can but know the glory thy whole being felt to think to act to be the celt not celt alone america her arms about thee hath entwined the noblest traits of each grand race in thee were happily combined as sweet of song as strong of speech thy great heart beat in every line no narrow partisan worth thou the cause of all oppressed was thine the world is cruel still and cold but who can doubt thy life has told though wrong and sorrow still are rife old earth is better for thy life End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 43 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Columbian Ode Four hundred years ago a tangled waste Lay sleeping on the West Atlantic side. Their devious ways the old world's millions traced, Content and loved and labored dared and died while students still believed the charts they conned and wallowed in their thriftless ignorance nor dreamed of other lands that lay beyond old ocean's dense indefinite expanse but deep within her heart old nature knew that she had once arrayed at earth's behest another offspring fine and fair to view the chosen suckling off the mother's breast the child was wrapped in vestments soft and fine each fold a work of nature's matchless art the mother looked on it with love divine and strained the love one closely to her heart and there it lay and with the warmth grew strong and hardy by the salt sea breezes fanned till time with mellowing touches passed along and changed the infant to a mighty land but men knew naught of this till they arose that mighty mariner the genoese who dared to try in spite of fears and foes the unknown fortunes off unsounded seas o noblest of italia's sons they bark went not alone into that shrouding night o dauntless dearer of the rayless dark the world sailed with thee to eternal light to deer haunts that with game were crowded then to-day are tilled and cultivated lands the schoolhouse towers where the ruin had his den and where the wigwam stood the chapel stands the place that nurtured men of savage mien now teems with men of nature's noblest types where moved the forest foliage banner green now flutters in the breeze the stars and stripes end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 44 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Meadowlark Though the winds be dank and the sky be sober And the grieving day in a mantle gray Hath let her waiting maiden robe her All the fields along I can hear the song Of the meadowlark As she flits and flutters And laughs at the thunder when it mutters O oh, happy bird, of heart most gay, To sing when skies are gray. 
when the clouds are full and the tempest master lets the loud wind sweep from his bosom deep like heralds of some dire disaster then the heart alone to itself makes moan and the songs come slow while the tears fall fleeter and silence than song by far seems sweeter oh few are they along the way who sing when skies are gray end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 45 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar The Seedling As a quiet little seedling lay within its darksome bed, to itself it fell a-talking, and this is what it said. I am not so very robust, but I'll do the best I can. And the seedling from that moment its work of life began. So it pushed a little leaflet up into the light of day to examine the surroundings and show the rest the way. The leaflet liked the prospect, so it called its brother Stam. Then two other leaflets heard it and quickly followed them. To be sure, the haste and hurry made the seedling sweat and pant, but almost before it knew it, it found itself a plant. The sunshine poured upon it, and the clouds they gave a shower, and the little plant kept growing till it found itself a flower. Little folks be like the seedling, always do the best you can. Every child must share life's labor, just as well as every man. And the sun and showers will help you through the lonesome struggling hours till you raise to light and beauty. Virtues fear on fading flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 46 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Poor Withered Rose. A song. Poor withered rose, she gave it me. Half in revenge and half in glee, its petals not so pink by half, as are her lips when curled to laugh, as are her cheeks when dimples gay, in merry mischief o'er them play. Forgive, forgive, it seems unkind to cast thy petals to the wind. But it is right, and lest I err, so scatter I all thoughts of her. Poor withered rose, so like my heart, that wilts at sorrow's cruel dart. Who hath not felt the winter's blight, when every hope seemed warm and bright? Who doth not know love unreturned, e'en when the heart most wildly burned forgive forgive it seems unkind to cast thy petals to the wind but it is right and lest i err so scatter i all thoughts of her poor withered rose thou liest dead too soon thy beauty's bloom hath fled tis not without a tearful root I watch decay thy blushing youth, and though thy life goes out in dole, thy perfume lingers in my soul. Forgive, forgive, it seems unkind to cast thy petals to the wind, but it is right, and lest I err, so scatter I all thoughts of her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 47 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Confirmation He was a poet 
who wrote clever verses, and folks said he had fine poetical taste. But his father, a practical farmer, accused him of letting the strength of his arm go to waste. He called on his sweetheart each Saturday evening, as pretty a maiden as man ever faced, and there he confirmed the old man's accusation by letting the strength of his arm go to waste. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 48. Nora, A Serenade. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Kennedy. Ah, Nora, my Nora, the light fades away while night like a spirit steals up o'er the hills the thrush from his tree where he chanted all day no longer his music in ecstasy thrills then nora be near me thy presence doth cheer me thine eye hath a gleam that is truer than gold i cannot but love thee so do not reprove me if the strength of my passion should make me too bold Nora, pride of my heart, rosy cheeks, cherry lips, sparkling with glee, wake from thy slumbers wherever thou art, wake from thy slumbers to me. Ah, Nora, my Nora, there's love in the air, it stirs in the numbers that thrills in my brain, O oh, sweet, sweet is love with its mingling of care, though joy travels only a step before pain. Be roused from thy slumbers and list to my numbers. My heart is poured out in the song unto thee. Oh, be thou not cruel, thou treasure, thou jewel. Turn thine ear to my pleading and hearken to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 49 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Evening The moon begins her stately ride across the summer sky. The happy wavelets lash the shore. The tide is rising high. Beneath some friendly blade of grass, the lazy beetle cowers. The coffers of the ear are filled with offerings from the flowers. And slowly buzzing o'er my head, a swallow wings her flight. I hear the weary plowman sing as falls the restful night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 50 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar To Primer Lines on Reading Driftwood Driftwood gathered here and there along the beach of time. Now and then a chip of truth mid boards and boughs of rhyme. Driftwood gathered day by day, the cypress and the oak, twigs that in some former time from sturdy home trees broke. Did this wood come floating thick all along down Injun Creek, or did kind tides bring it thee from the pass? receding sea, down the stream of memory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 51 Of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Sympathy The tear another's tears bring forth, the sigh which answers sigh, the pulse that beats at others' woes, e'en though our own be nigh, a balm to bathe the wounded heart, where sorrow's hand hath lain, the link divine from soul to soul that makes us one in pain. Sweet sympathy, benignant ray, light of the soul doth shine, in it is human nature given, a touch of the divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Poem 52 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar My Love Irene Farewell, farewell, my love Irene, The pangs of sadness stir my breast. Though many miles may intervene, My soul's with thine in east or west. Go where thou wilt, to wealth or fame, Win for thyself, or praise or blame. My love shall ever be the same, my love Irene. Farewell, farewell, my love Irene, O oh, sad decree that we must part. The wound is deep, the pain is keen, that agitates mine aching heart. My feverish eyes burn up their tears, I cannot still my doubts and fears. And this one sigh the night wind hears. My love, Irene. Farewell, farewell, my love, Irene. The morning's gray now floods the sky. The sun peeps from his misty screen. Mine only love, goodbye, goodbye. All love must fade, all life must die. The smile must turn into the sigh. Alas, how hard to say goodbye, my love, Irene. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 53 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Common Things I like to hear of wealth and gold and Eldorados in their glory. I like for silks and satins bold to sweep and rustle through a story. The nightingale is sweet of song, the rare exotic smells divinely, and knightly men who stride along the role heroic carry finely. But then, upon the other hand, our minds have got a way of running to things that aren't quite so grand, which maybe we were best in shunning. For some of us still like to see the poor man in his dwelling narrow, the hollyhock, the bumblebee, the meadowlark, and chirping sparrow. We like the man who soars and sings with high and lofty inspiration, but he who sings of common things shall always share our admiration. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 54 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Going Back He stood beside the station rail, a negro aged and bent and frail. His palsied hands like the aspen shook, and a mute appeal was in his look. His every move was pained and slow, and his matted hair was white as snow. He noted our questioning looks and said, with a solemn shake of his hoary head, I reckon you're wondering, and well you may, why an old man like me's a going today. I've lived in this town for thirty years, and known alike my joys and tears, and I've labored hard year out, year in, but now I'm going back again to the bluegrass meadows and fields of corn in the dear old state where I was born. It's the same old tale that I have to tell, and there's few of my race but knows it well. When first the proclamation come, I felt too free to stay at home. Freedom, it seemed, was a gift divine, and I thought the whole wide world was mine. Then I was spry and my hair was black, and this troublesome crook wasn't in my back. My soul was allus full of song, for my heart was light and my limbs was strong, and I wasn't afraid to show my face to the sturdiest worker on the place. Well, I caught the fever that ruled the day, and finally northward made my way. They said that things were better north, and a man was held at his honest worth. Well, it may be so, but I have some doubt. 
and thirty years ain't wiped it out. There was lots of things in the North to admire, though they hadn't the warmth and passion and fire that all my life I had been used to seeing, and thought belonged to a human being. And a thing I couldn't help but miss was the real old Southern hardiness. But year after year I worried along, while deep in my heart the yearning strong grew stronger and fiercer to visit once more the well-loved scenes on my native shore. But money was scarce and time went on, till now full thirty years I have gone. Ere I turn my aged steps to Rome, back to my old Kentucky home, back to the old Kentucky sights, back to the scene of my youth's delights, back where my heart was full of glee, back where I first found liberty. Even now, as I think the old times o'er, and all the joy they held in store, Yes, even now, on life's dark side, my heart swells out with honest pride. Oh, praise the Lamb that I shall see once more the land so dear to me. Don't mind an old man's tears, but say, it's joy, he's going back today. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 55 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Justice Enthroned upon the mighty truth Within the confines of the laws True justice seeth not the man But only hears his cause Unconscious of his creed or race She cannot see but only ways For justice with unbandaged eyes Would be oppression in disguise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 56 of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar Night of Love The moon has left the sky, love. The stars are hiding now. And frowning on the world, love, Night bears her sable brow. The snow is on the ground, love, and cold and keen the air is. I'm singing here to you, love. You're dreaming there in Paris. But this is nature's law, love, though just it may not seem, that men should wake to sing, love, while maidens sleep and dream. Them care may not molest, love, nor stir them from their slumbers, though midnight find the swain, love, still halting o'er his numbers. I watch the rosy dawn, love, come stealing up the east, while all things round rejoice, love, that night her reign has ceased. The lark will soon be heard, love, and on his way be winging, when nature's poets wake, love, why should a man be singing? End of poem. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Kennedy. This recording is in the public domain. End of Oak and Ivy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar